How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and this is the ultimate FPS increase guide for the Battlefield 6 beta. This video aims to provide you with the best gameplay experience possible on your PC with optimized graphics presets so you can optimize outright for performance or for a balance of visual fidelity and more importantly reducing input latency and fixing stutters. Alongside some hidden tweaks and options to provide you with a massive FPS boost on many systems and for those that are interested in seeing the specific FPS and latency data effects of all settings, optimizations, tweaks and tests to see the exact percentage difference of FPS and latency between them, such as the different graphics presets, upscaling techniques, where we even compare performance and latency data between the Steam and EA app version of the game. To ensure best results, please do follow along with as many steps in this video as possible, because just adjusting your in-game settings could be leaving a massive amount of performance on the table when it comes to Battlefield 6. In this video, we'll be covering absolutely everything that you need to do from start to finish as quickly as possible to get the best performance possible on your system, alongside providing you with the optimal optimized presets towards performance and quality so you can have your game still look nice or just go completely eSports, highest FPS possible, it's really up to you. First thing I would do, regardless if you're utilizing an Nvidia, AMD or Intel GPU, please upgrade your graphics card drivers. Go over to the app, control panel or website for your GPU manufacturer and download and install the latest driver to ensure that you have the latest fixes and optimizations as these could potentially fix performance issues you might be experiencing. Next up, for very basic and quick Windows settings, start by going down to your Windows button and search for game space mode. Ensure that Windows game mode is switched on. Go down to the Windows button again, this time typing in GPU space settings, clicking on the graphics settings tab. Ensure that optimizations for windowed games has been selected. This is irrelevant for Battlefield 6 but it's great to utilize on other games so I just recommend turning that on. We then want to go down to advanced graphics settings. If the option is available to you, do enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. It's also a recommendation on the Battlefield 6 recommended settings page. You may be wondering if you should be utilizing the Steam version of the game or the EA app version. For my comparisons, there isn't too much of a performance difference when GPU bound, but in CPU bound scenarios, especially when you're optimizing towards higher FPS, there does seem to be a slight FPS increase going with the EA app version of the game. So if you're noticing performance issues, try just downloading the version on EA app without Steam and trying the game over there because you might see a small FPS increase, especially if you're chasing the highest frames possible. So far for my personal gameplay of the beta, I have had absolutely zero issues with the EA app version of the game, but throughout my brief testing of the Steam version of the game, I did have three instances of the game outright crashing, which I never had on the EA app version. Now this could just be due to my specific system, but if you are experiencing issues and you do have the Steam version, try the EA app version, which might fix it for you. If you happen to be interested in the performance differences between Windows 10 and Windows 11 with Battlefield 6, this is quick and limited testing, but my initial results were for Windows 10 in a CPU bound scenario we had 408 to 425 fps compared to windows 11 in a cpu bound scenario giving 413 to 436. windows 10 gpu bound saw 235 to 237 and windows 11 gpu bound saw 231 to 232. These results show a pretty clear indication that there is no performance difference between either operating system, so if you're on Windows 11 or Windows 10, don't worry, you are getting the best performance. With that out of the way, let's jump into the game. You can adjust your in-game settings whilst you're inside of a live match, and that's completely fine, but for the purpose of this video and quick comparisons, I'm going to be going with the firing range. If you're also utilizing the firing range to adjust your settings, you will need to quit to the menu, make any settings adjustments, and then load back into the firing range. But it is super quick to load back into, so it's not too time consuming. Starting off with the optimized graphics presets, head over to the settings cog at the top, or by pressing escape. Go to graphics on the left hand side. Under the main graphics panel, select modify. At the top of graphics quality, change this over to custom. And on screen now, you'll be able to see two optimized graphics presets. On the left hand side, we have optimized performance, and on the right hand side, we have optimized quality. It's worth bearing in mind that you can't really adjust the graphic settings too low inside of this game, so even the optimized performance preset still looks pretty good, and I would recommend that you start off with that, because if you are happy with how that looks, it will come with an even higher FPS boost. So start with the optimized performance preset, see how it looks in the game. If it looks good, keep it. If you want better visuals, go with the optimized quality preset. If you decide that you don't want to go with the optimized quality preset and the optimized performance preset still isn't giving enough FPS, you could alternatively just set everything to the lowest possible setting, whether it's low or off. Again, you can't make the game look too terrible, so this is still a valid option. 
if you still want more frames. Before you test the graphics presets, do make sure that you do actually restart the game to ensure that everything has been applied properly. I've gone with the optimized performance preset. We're by no means anywhere near done with optimizing the game, but we've already seen a 20% FPS increase. With the optimized preset then applied, we can then adjust the graphic visual settings. Head over to the graphics panel, navigate down to camera settings, Field of view doesn't have much of an impact at all on FPS or latency, so set this to your personal preference. I'm going to be going with 120. Vehicle third person field of view, again, is complete personal preference. Weapon field of view, personal preference. World motion blur, we're going to be reducing all the way down. Weapon motion blur, zero. Camera shake amount, 20. Chromatic aberration, vignette, and film grain, I'm going to be switching off. If you want your game to look slightly more cinematic, then you could turn chromatic aberration back on, but I'd recommend going off with all three of these options. For full screen mode, keep this at borderless. On both Windows 10 and 11, because this is a DirectX 12 game, this is completely irrelevant. Borderless and full screen are just as fast as each other, and there's no benefit to going with full screen. Vertical sync, I'd recommend switching off, unless you are utilizing a custom VRR plus VSync setup. Interface and HUD, again, are complete personal preference. We can now go back over to the graphics preset and head to the advanced section. The first option we're going to be adjusting with inside of here is our anti-aliasing and upscaling. If you want the clearest looking image possible and don't mind how sharp the game looks, the best visuals will be delivered with anti-aliasing off. And for those of you playing on high-end systems at 1080p or potentially 1440p, I would actually recommend going with anti-aliasing off. But if you're looking for the outright best performance possible whilst keeping the game still looking good, head over to upscaling technique. For those of you on Nvidia GPUs, if DLSS is available with inside of here, you need to utilize DLSS, there is absolutely no reason to utilize anything else. The game ships with DLSS 4 and it looks fantastic. For those of you utilizing AMD GPUs, Intel GPUs, or Nvidia GPUs which do not support Nvidia DLSS, Intel's XESS2 does ship with the game and it does look better than the current implementation of FSR, but it does perform worse. So for that reason, if you do not have DLSS available to you, go with FSR. Whether you're utilizing DLSS or FSR, start at the quality preset, load into your game, see how much of an FPS increase you've received. Jump back into the settings, lower it from quality to balanced, jump back in, and continue to do this until you go as low as possible. You want to set your upscaling quality as low as you're visually happy with. We're now able to see 184 frames per second on this system, which is an 84% increase than what we were running stock, and the visuals look fantastic. When adjusting your upscaling preset, whether you're going with DLSS or FSR, adjust the sharpen slider. You may prefer less sharpness or you might want more sharpness depending on the upscale preset you've gone with. For me personally, I set this to around about 20 to 30% as I find 50% on all graphics presets to be slightly too high for me, but this is completely up to you. Once that's completed, I then want you to exit out of your game and go back to your desktop. We now need to create a user config file which will allow us to adjust further settings which are available inside of the in-game console, but doing it this way allows all of those commands to be loaded when you boot the game so you don't have to manually type them out each time. You might be tempted to skip this step and that's completely fine but I would highly recommend that you give this a go because on many systems you will receive a massive FPS boost from doing this because we're also changing the amount of CPU cores the game has access to and this can fix performance issues on a lot of systems and it's super easy to turn back off so you might as well test it on your PC. On your desktop right click select new text document. We're then going to call this user. Once that's created, double click. In the description of this video, you'll be able to find the user config text that you want to copy and paste. Select all of the commands inside of there, right click and select copy. Jump to the notepad, right click and select paste. It should be set up very similar to this. I've also had this implemented on a few Intel PCs, which have also seen a massive increase from doing this. Once you have pasted those commands, go to the top left hand side to file, save as. Go to save as type, switch this to all files. Then go to the .txt at the end of the user config and change this to .cfg. Then go to the bottom right and select save. The user CFG should appear on your desktop as a CFG file. You can then get rid of the user.txt and just keep the CFG. To add this to your game, it's super simple. Starting off with the EA app users, go inside of the application, go to the game on the left hand side, go to manage, view properties, open folder. Grab the user.cfg file and just simply drag this into the game directory, select continue, and that's it set up. For those of you utilizing the Steam version of the game, right click on the game inside of Steam, go to Manage, Browse Local Files. Once you're inside of the game's folder, scroll down, drag the user CFG and drop it into the game directory. That's the user CFG set up, just boot back into your game as you typically would. Once you've loaded back into your game, I'd recommend booting into a live match or the firing range to retest now that you've set up the user CFG. 
First thing you're going to notice is that the lighting inside of the firing range and the in-game menu is a lot lower. This is a result of one of the commands we're using in the user config. You can choose to keep this command or remove it from the user config, but from my testing on all maps in light and dark areas, this only seems to affect the firing range and the in-game menu. And if you look in the top right hand side, you can now see that my FPS is at 214. You may have seen an even bigger increase on your system depending on how affected you were by these commands. The command which is causing the slightly lower lighting is world render light tile cs path enable if you go to the in-game console by pressing the tilde key on your keyboard you can actually type this command out followed by the number one to re-enable it you can then see the lighting immediately comes back to how it should be but again this is only in the firing range where this is affected if you also decide that you want to remove the user cfg from your game just again boot into the game's file directory scroll to the bottom and just click the user cfg right click and select delete but in my recommendation for every single person watching this video create the user CFG, utilize the lighting command, try it out in an actual game, and enjoy the massive FPS boost that comes with that. For those of you utilizing the EA app version of the game, please double check this setting because it could be causing a massive FPS reduction. Go to the top left hand side to the hamburger style menu, go down to settings, go to application, scroll down towards the bottom to in-game overlay you need to make sure that enable in-game overlay is switched on. In my testing on two PCs on both Windows 11 and Windows 10, there seems to be a bug if this is switched off. If you have the in-game overlay disabled, it seems to roughly half FPS in CPU bound scenarios. I'm not entirely sure why, but on two different systems, on two different operating systems, this bug was present. So ensure that enable in-game overlay is switched on. I also decided to test the Steam in-game overlay. This does not seem to have the same impact, so you can decide to keep that on or off. That's completely fine. You can now see utilizing the optimized pre sets, the optimized visual settings, and the user CFG are now getting about 225 FPS. Higher FPS is great, but we now need to optimize to reduce latency to make the game feel a lot more snappy and responsive. To do this, navigate inside of the in-game settings, go to the graphics panel, and go to advanced. The latency reduction feature for your GPU is a great start and a super simple and easy way just to get a decent latency reduction in all use cases. It's the simplest way to reduce latency significantly in the game. As of now, in my testing, AMD anti-lag doesn't seem to do anything on two systems I've tested it on. It might work for you, but it had no impact in FPS or latency across all of my testing. Nvidia Reflex is a fantastic option, and if you're going to utilize it, make sure to set it to enable plus boost. Enable plus boost will reduce the FPS you're getting ever so slightly, but it will drastically bring down the latency, which is more important. So even if you see an FPS loss from utilizing Reflex, you want that FPS loss because the latency reduction is way more important. Intel's XELL will also provide you very easy and convenient latency reduction results. And again, I would recommend using it if you want very simple settings. But if you're interested in fully optimizing your game for the lowest latency possible, I would actually recommend against using any of the GPU latency optimization features. Features. Instead, we're going to set up the frame limiter. If you're interested in seeing just how effective capping your in-game FPS is, with the game completely set up and optimized utilizing AMD's anti-lag, I was getting 200 FPS with 19.5 milliseconds of latency. Introducing an FPS cap of 170, brought the FPS down to 170, but brought the latency down to 11.5 milliseconds. That is a massive reduction in end-to-end -end latency and will definitely be felt in-game. The key to capping your FPS in-game correctly is that you need to limit your FPS below what you're typically able to get. With your new optimized settings, let's say that you're playing the game anywhere from 130 to 160 FPS. Because you're typically dropping down to 130 in this example, I would recommend capping anywhere from 110 to 120. You want to ensure that the FPS limit that you set, you're at about 99% of the time whilst you're playing. If you cap your in-game FPS at 160 and you're rarely hitting 160, then you're not going to see the latency reduction benefits of capping FPS. When you're utilizing an in-game frame rate limiter, it is worth taking off that extra top end FPS in exchange for the much lower latency, because your game will feel a lot snappier, way more responsive, and it won't feel as heavy or sluggish. So even though you are giving up some FPS from doing this, the benefits you will have in end-to-end -end latency will far outweigh it. If you're utilizing a custom FPS overlay, like I am in the top right hand side, you can now see my GPU usage is about 85% and that's what you want. If your GPU usage is above sort of 92% inside of the game, your FPS limit might still be slightly too high. Try and get that GPU usage about 90% or below and you will see the massive reductions in input latency from doing that. Some maps will perform worse than others, so if you notice that your in-game FPS is slightly lower, reduce the frame rate limit by about an extra 5 to 10 frames at a time until you find something that you're able to achieve on basically all maps 99% of the time when you're playing. 
That is an extra step, and if you want simple and easy latency reductions, especially if you have access to NVIDIA Reflex or Intel's XELL, just set those to enable plus boost. You'll get the majority of the benefits without the extra tuning. Anti-lag on two of my GPUs doesn't seem to have an effect whatsoever, so I can't recommend using that right now, but you will see better results than Reflex, XELL, or Anti-lag in their best case scenarios when you set an FPS limit correctly. When you limit your FPS, you'll also be taking some of the extra pressure off of your GPU and CPU, which will reduce the power usage of both components, reducing your system's temperatures, which may also help your CPU and GPU boost higher for longer, resulting in more consistent FPS. Last but not least, for the in-game settings, one thing that I would definitely recommend that you at least try out, because when you set it up properly, the input latency is actually very, very good, is frame generation. For those of you utilizing older NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, or Intel GPUs, you will have access to AMD's FSR frame generation, and for those of you on newer NVIDIA GPUs, you will have access to NVIDIA's frame gen or potentially multi-frame gen. Now, I would typically not recommend utilizing frame generation in a multiplayer title, but if you set it up correctly in this game, due to how the in-game frame rate limiter works, you can actually get some very good results with better than stock latency. But you have to make sure that you set up your in-game frame rate limiter with frame gen to get those latency results. The easiest way to set this up and tune it for latency and consistency to get the results I'm talking about is to simply enable the frame generation in your game with no FPS limiter. Whether it's FSR frame generation, multi-frame generation, or NVIDIA frame generation, with the frame generation enabled in your game, don't pay too much attention of how it feels or how it looks yet. With frame generation enabled, with no FPS limiters, look at the FPS you're able to achieve with frame gen on. As you can see for me, I'm dropping down to about 250 FPS. The easiest way to optimize frame gen is to simply half this number with your in-game frame limiter. So if I'm getting 250 FPS, I'll go to options, graphics, advanced, frame rate limiter on, and I'll set this to 225. If I then go back into my game, you can see with frame gen, I'm getting 250 because it's doubling my FPS. You can also see my GPU usage is below 92%, which is where we want to keep it, which is going to give us that really low latency gameplay, even when utilizing frame gen. Yes, the latency will still be higher than if you're utilizing a fully optimized game with a frame rate limiter, but when comparing this to stock settings, the latency will still be a lot lower. Play the game as you typically would. If my or your FPS starts dropping below double what your FPS cap is, so for me that would be 250. If my FPS starts dropping below that, all I need to do is go to the options menu and slightly lower that FPS cap. So instead of 125, I'll go with 120. This will give me 240 frames with frame gen enabled. What you're looking for is throughout most of your gameplay, your FPS to be completely solid with frame gen enabled. If it starts dropping, lower that FPS cap. Whether you've decided to go just with an in-game FPS limiter or pairing it with frame generation, if your FPS is at or below your monitor's maximum refresh rate, for the majority of the time you're playing the game, I would highly recommend that you turn on G-Sync or FreeSync because this will help increasing the smoothness of the game. And this works fantastically when paired with an FPS cap. And if you'd like to see more details on how to set this up quickly and easily on your system, please do check out the video in the card on the top right hand side of the screen or check out the video linked in the description down below. If you're utilizing the user CFG, Another really useful option which should now be enabled in your game is the small performance overlay in the top right hand side. This will help you better understand your system's performance and what is causing your performance bottleneck. The top option will show you your CPU's current FPS and your GPU's FPS. In this example, my GPU is currently able to render 303 frames per second, but my CPU is only able to render 242. If I had a faster CPU, the CPU might be able to render more frames than 303, but my GPU would then become the bottleneck because it's only able to render 303. On your system, these numbers could be completely flipped or they might be similar to mine. These will change completely dependent on how many players are in the server, what server you're playing on, the map, the mode, and the hardware in which you are using. Let me know of your thoughts and results in that comment section down below. If you happen to have any other tips or tricks, please do let us know and stay tuned on the channel for the full version of the Battlefield 6 optimization guide when the game comes out. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.